То есть, если бы вы спросили, каким образом на вас влияет, скажем, ваш любимый Брессон, или Антониони, или Бергман, или Курасава, Мизакучи, я бы не сказал, что таким образом, что я пытаюсь им подражать. Потому что самое главное в любом искусстве – это найти свой собственный язык, найти способ говорить на языке, который свойственен только тебе и никому больше. What words would best describe a Tarkovsky film? Haunting, ethereal, hypnotic, serene? Tarkovsky was a one-of-a-kind artist whose works have become instantly recognizable through their masterful spellbinding imagery and the atmosphere oozing from their pores. If I were asked who makes pure cinema, one of the first names that would spring to mind is Andrei Tarkovsky. His cinematic philosophy was that communication doesn't have to be expressed vocally. Words, words, words. Emotion is another way to relay a message, and the right images can express emotions far beyond the verbal. To quote the man himself, a poet is someone who uses a single image to express a universal message. Tarkovsky only made seven feature films, yet all of them display his own distinctive methodology. Here was a man who strived to be unique in order to discover what he could offer to the aesthetic of cinema as an art. He disregarded the methods of others in his own work and instead acted as a stylistic individual. If I notice that a piece of film or a piece of film or a piece of film suddenly becomes similar to what he could do, I try to change the decision of the other scene. Tarkovsky was only concerned with techniques that were uniquely cinematic, to do with film that which couldn't be done with other art forms. The concentration on visual expression, combined with his originality, formed a special type of filmic grammar a language that didn't comply to the rules of reality, but existed within their own bespoke laws. Tarkovsky's visual language was consistent across his career. Recurring elements in his images were frequent. Composition was often one of Tarkovsky's most captivating trademarks, possibly due to his background as a photographer. But the first thing that I notice about the Tarkovsky look is an element of composition that's referenced less than framing, staging or balance. Texture. Sometimes images are most effective when they draw you into their world. And if I can visually feel something, that world becomes instantly tactile. Tarkovsky likes to project the real world, and so many of his textures are made through naturalistic components. The embers of a coal fire, a waterlogged home, the elements. Textures add great visual interest to a scene, and something as simple as dust flowing through the air can make what was a basic shot more dynamic. Легко, красиво. But not only do rusted walls and marshlands gain our attention, they intensify the emotions inside the image. The settings that Tarkovsky shoots include some kind of rhythmic pattern, like a rugged backdrop or an uneven ground. He utilizes some sort of alien material that surrounds the character. And when you include an element encapsulating the subject that contains a certain grit, subconsciously, all emotion feels heightened. It's why we see moments of high drama take place in the rain. Or if you want to give a particular item a sense of gravitas, crinkled pages and jagged bumps will remain in the mind of the viewer. Any subject in the frame has this effect. Making it feel real makes it feel relevant. Tarkovsky uses textures in a way that they develop these associations to the viewer. Rising smoke and tattered fabric may look good, but the emotional intensity that a tangible ingredient can bring is far greater. Most of Tarkovsky's methods, above all else, were used to create atmosphere, and his moods can't only be seen, they can be heard. One thing about Tarkovsky films is that they're some of the quietest films you'll see. Тишина-то какая. 
silence is a great way to build anticipation to something, and a contrast of silence with noise is a terrific juxtaposing technique. But Tarkovsky typically settles on a middle ground between the two. When creating a scene, Tarkovsky isolates one sound and enhances it. It could be the dripping of water, or the crackling of fire. Some films work best at capturing the reality of all sounds in the scene. That's realism. But it doesn't necessarily denote artistic merit. With Tarkovsky, he chooses those sounds that correspond with the emotion in an image and singles them out. Simply put, he chooses the elements that have great significance to his subject at that time. Your character may not remember everything about a single event, but they may remember the sound of their heartbeat. This brings me to an aspect of Tarkovsky that I feel can't not be mentioned when discussing his work. What do his movies mean? Tarkovsky hailed from the school of thought that art couldn't be explained from a purely intellectual perspective, so I don't feel as though it's right to analyse it from a purely intellectual perspective. The thing about the perception of Tarkovsky's films is that people think they're difficult to understand and try to decipher what everything means. But Tarkovsky's films are mostly assembled through intuition. The notion of order in life is an abstract one, and this is reflected in his cinematic streams of consciousness. His films don't come with pre-packaged deductions. In there lies a truth, but one that must remain unknown to audience and artist alike. Ja, men tror du verkligen att människan skulle kunna finna på en konstruktion, en universell konstruktion, skapa en modell så att säga av den absoluta lagen, den absoluta sanningen? If there's one thing I want to achieve with this video, it's to give people a greater understanding and appreciation of Tarkovsky's approach. Contrary to popular belief, Tarkovsky avoided arcane symbolism in his work. Using a symbol in a film means that you've created a definite meaning. But art should be left to interpretation. Tarkovsky's aim was to have the audience discover meaning for themselves. And when the methods of a director remain a mystery to the audience, they're inclined to find significance in that reality. We think further on that which we don't understand. Regardless of the explanation of the zone in Stalker or the ocean in Solaris, it's the ambiguity in moments like this that allow the audience to develop their own meanings based on their own perceptions. And so the elements of Tarkovsky films that appear to carry some grandiose suggestions aren't symbolic, they're purely atmospheric. It's a way Tarkovsky brings the real world into the film to garner an immediate emotional response from the viewer. We've been taught to search for answers, but sometimes a scene is what it is. The question isn't why does something happen, but what does it mean to the character? Tarkovsky isn't asking us to find a definite answer in his work. He asks that we embrace the emotions that the subject feels. Rain doesn't mean anything, but it might to the character. Tarkovsky tells his stories by having the emotion of cinema manifest itself to us directly, and did this by building character through action. Without a word spoken, what makes us understand helplessness better than a woman sitting on a well, watching her livelihood burn in front of her eyes? Once it's understood that Tarkovsky in cinema is instinctive rather than logical, whose events simply show us what resonates with the characters, his techniques become much clearer. In the words of David Lynch, I don't know why people expect art to make sense when they accept the fact that life doesn't make sense. The fragmented and episodic feel of Tarkovsky's films came from his editing process. Instead of a logical foundation for his films, he opted for a poetic one, using a metaphoric thread between scenes, as opposed to any literal reasoning. In this scene from Nostalgia, we cut from a man having set himself on fire, to a man struggling to light a candle. Tarkovsky rejected the theory of montage put forth by Eisenstein, 
It focused too much on the intellectual and interferes with cinema's emotional side. Instead, he decides to seclude a set structure in favour of a kind of narrative nihilism. The idea that life has links throughout its sequence of events is facile, and any connections are fortuitous. All the events we see are merely what the character deems significant to oneself. For instance, the unrelated prologue in Andrei Rublev is significant. It summarises the hectic nature of the world that our protagonist must overcome. It's you. <laughs> this is why the past, the present, dreams and reality all coagulate into one another in Tarkovsky's work. They're all scenes that don't have any immediate relevancy. They're simply a mist, a collection of significant moments that were vital in shaping our character. Most of Tarkovsky's techniques demonstrate the importance of showing what is significant to the character. This can even be seen in his camera work. In many scenes, the camera takes on a subjective role whose movements practically mimic the viewers. At moments that pique our interest, the camera will slowly begin to track inwards, as though it's leaning in due to interest. E questa la fine del mondo. It's as though the camera is the physical form of our character's train of thought, sometimes listening to a conversation whilst calmly tracking through an empty room, admiring its surroundings. But perhaps the most noticeable aspect of Tarkovsky's visual style is his use of long takes. There's a slight grievance I have with modern cinema and how it decides to shoot. On the one hand, you have films that cut so much that no individual shot means anything. It's just shot for efficiency. And on the other hand, you have those artists that embrace the long takes, but sometimes can feel aimless. What's motivating this movement of the camera? But when Tarkovsky uses a long take, it isn't to show off how impressive the shot is. In fact, sometimes you may not even notice it. I think the best way to understand Tarkovsky's penchant for long takes are with scenes like this. Just people in a room, talking. The length of these individual shots emphasises the fleeting nature of time, and Tarkovsky was adamant in making the audience feel the importance of each passing moment. Give a shot enough time, and meaning will be formed of its own accord. But editing can disrupt this. We are made to feel this inertia, drabness of time. Time is not just a neutral light medium within which things happen, we feel the density of time itself. Tarkovsky edits individual scenes based on what he referred to as the pressure of time within a scene. Different to shot length, think of pressure as the atmosphere within a scene. As more time passes, that atmosphere builds, and once the atmosphere has reached its zenith, then you cut. But if lingering on a subject longer will continue to build pressure in a scene, then do so. A limit of cinema is that it has to be shown sequentially, but the fabric of time in which that movie is shown can be manipulated through stretching and disrupting the pressure of time. Through forcing the audience to be aware of the fabric of time itself, Tarkovsky elevates his powerful atmospheres. Tarkovsky asks that we embrace a style of storytelling that reflects a state of mind, a refracted layer of consciousness, to conjure an emotion and let the camera do the talking. Even though he created works that were assembled through instinct, this doesn't mean that he didn't put thought into his work. In fact, the burning house at the end of the sacrifice was rigged to burn down in exactly 8 minutes and 10 seconds, and that was the second take. Tarkovsky's films are a kind of philosophy, something that helps people gain a greater comprehension of their experiences. This approach of relating to reality through a poignant resonance with the viewer was how he revealed to us what's beautiful in life. As he said himself, art symbolizes the meaning of our existence. <laughs>